The Supreme Court began hearing arguments on the White House's requirement that 80 million workers get vaccinated. The mandate is part of the Biden administration's push to increase the country's vaccination rates at a time when the Omicron strain is sending COVID case counts soaring. Now, during the hearing, conservative justices appear to have cast some doubt over the mandate, and a ruling could be made within a few days, if not sooner. Here now with more on today's special hearing is Bloomberg News Supreme Court reporter Greg Storr. Greg, always good to speak with you. Can you start us off by giving us the quick take on what was said today? Yeah, so this was an argument about whether this this uh, shot or test rule can go into effect. It's supposed to kick in as soon as Monday. Uh, states and business groups were arguing that it should not be that the that OSHA went beyond its authority, and the Biden administration uh, is defending it, saying we really need this to, to stem the tide of COVID. Now, there's another White House rule out there as well that would require shots for workers in nursing homes and other facilities that get funding from Medicare and Medicaid. Is the court likely to rule or lean the same way on this? Not necessarily. It's two different statutes govern, governing them, and that's really what this is about. It's about uh, when Congress set up the agencies, OSHA and the Center for Medi Medicare and Medicaid, uh, whether it gave them the authority to do something like this. So the court doesn't have to come out the same way. And based on the arguments, the court was especially skeptical about the OSHA rule and a little more equivocal about the health care rule. So let's take a step back here for a moment and just consider the context, because I wonder how receptive the Supreme Court is overall to other vaccine mandates, because I kind of remember they rejected religious objections to some vaccine rules. How are those different from what's being argued today? Yeah, that's a really important question. Uh, those were all stated, and at least one case, local vaccine mandates. And uh, this is all about the power of the federal government. And for some of the court's conservatives, that's a huge difference. And in fact, Justice Neil Gorsuch brought that up in the argument today. He said, hey, I uh, rejected a challenge to one of those state mandates in, involving uh, New Mexico. Um, uh, but here we're talking about something very different. We're talking about whether Congress authorized OSHA to do this. And a number of the conservative justices suggested they didn't think Congress had and that maybe this was an area that, that, that Congress should act in if the federal government's going to have the authority. So it's less... Uh a rule or less uh, less consideration of the fact that it's COVID and vaccines and more on states' rights and the reach of the federal government is what it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, certainly the argument on the other side is, hey, this is a huge pandemic. Uh, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of people have, die, have died. That's certainly the point the court's liberal justice has made and the Biden administration as well. Uh, but the question is, uh, you know, we've known for a long time that the possibility of this sort of pandemic is out there, and yet Congress hasn't acted. And even mm. during this pandemic, Congress didn't explicitly give any of these agencies the authority, so the argument goes. Uh, and so maybe uh, we need to wait for Congress to do something. Got it, got it. So uh, for the liberal side, it's, it's all about you can't ignore and untie COVID and the pandemic from any of this. There, there was a moment of irony here, too, Greg, as well, because the lawyers that are representing the state, apparently they had COVID or they tested positive for COVID as well? Yeah, two, two of the lawyers who were arguing for the states, uh, the lawyer for Ohio and the lawyer for Louisiana, uh, both uh, apparently had positive tests. It was a mandatory rule at the court. You have to test, take a PCR test the day before. If you test positive, uh, you have to argue remotely. And so that's what they did. Uh, the lawyer for Ohio... Uh, spokesperson said that he had actually tested positive uh, after Christmas and that there was some ling lingering virus and that's why he tested positive. Uh, it's the first time that rule has, been, has kicked in. It's the first time a lawyer has had to go remotely to argue a case uh, because of COVID. Uh, certainly ironic in this case. You've been covering the Supreme Court and legal cases for decades now. So let's get into Supreme Court, not minutia, but some, some expertise here in terms of today was not a full briefing. This was a special session. What's different about these special sessions from what normally happens? Yeah, so, so what this was were a series of stay applications. Those are the emergency requests that the court gets that it almost always decides just based on the, the briefing and usually in a matter of days. This is not one of these cases where the court says, we're going to take this case up on the merits, do a whole new round of briefing, a lot of amicus briefs, friend of the court briefs. Uh, so uh, this is the first time since I've been covering the court for over a couple decades that the court has done anything like this. Um, it comes amid all this criticism of how they've been handling the so-called shadow docket, all these emergency requests. 
Uh, there have been calls for greater transparency, and that may be part of what was going on here, why the court decided we want to hear arguments and really have a chance to, mm. to think through and flesh out our reasons. So what's next, Greg? What, what should we be looking for? Well, we could get something very soon. Uh, as I suggested, the rule is scheduled, the OSHA rule is scheduled to kick in next week. Um, the administration has said we're not actually going to start citing, uh, uh, slapping companies with citations unless they're acting in bad faith until February. Still, you could see the court, especially if it's inclined to block this rule, wanting to act very quickly uh, so that companies know from the get-go that this rule is indeed blocked. Got it. Greg Store, thank you so much. Bloomberg News Supreme Court reporter joining us on the latest with the Supreme Court considering the Biden administration's rule that 80 million workers get vaccinated.